the best five supplements that actually work for natural lifters. Call me Haymaker. This is gonna be uh, based off of our own personal experience, our own personal opinions. However, it's gonna be largely based within scientific research, mainly with research from examine.com and a big shout out to Eric Helms. I'm using a lot of his bodybuilding guides article to support this video. All right, so keep in mind these are for naturals, not for non-naturals. There's obviously more supplements that will do better things than these, but we're gonna kick it off with the top five supplements for natural lifters. Let's dive into it. Okay, so number one is going to be creatine. This is being deemed by Eric Helms as the most ergogenic and safe supplement on the market that's actually potent and has a direct effect on muscle gain. This has been proven and replicated in several studies, and what it actually does is it helps by achieving muscle saturation within the muscle, which in turn utilizes your body's ability to use water for ATP, giving you increased strength and potentially muscle size. Another wonderful thing about this supplement is that there is no side effects, guys. A lot of people will talk about a lot of outdated and unproven studies about how it's gonna cause kidney or liver failure. This is simply not true, and it is a fallacy. So you are safe to take creatine. The next question is dosages. A lot of people wanna know if it should be loaded or not. So you will be able to load creatine and this will help you achieve muscle saturation faster, which is what you need for it to actually work. Usually they say it will happen in about seven to 14 days, doing on about the three milligram recommendation. However, the only negative side effect that could come with loading, so this is why I wouldn't recommend it, is GI discomfort. And that's something you want to avoid. If you really need to load it for a particular reason, myself and Kyle will go off of it to kind of cut back on some of our water weight when we're getting ready for powerlifting comp. So what we'll do is we'll load for powerlifting and we have actually been okay but I would recommend testing it before you do anything like that so a lot of studies were done one where they loaded one group with 20 grams of creatine a day this is a lot that is about four tablespoons and another where they did three milligrams which is the low end recommendation and they found that both were able to improve muscle saturation by 20% with the creatine and in turn both groups saw a one to two kilogram increase in body mass so this proves that it doesn't really matter if you load it, but it might help you get there faster. Other studies have shown that. So a lot of supplement companies will market some creatines as better than others. The, um, a common one is KA or CEE. They'll say that these are better because they're non-bloating and they're different. However, this isn't the case. You want to stick with the creatine monohydrate. In fact, it might even be better than those pure, more expensive forms, and here's why. So as you guys can see here, two researchers, Talon and Child, found a greater portion of CE and KA are degraded in the stomach than CM. Additionally, recent investigations have shown that 20 to 42 days of CEE or KA supplementation did not increase muscle creatine concentrations more than creatine monohydrate. Thus, it appears that creatine monohydrate may in fact be the most effective as it achieves more of that saturation effect. So case in point, you're gonna to wanna to take about three grams a day. You can load if you need to for some competition or some one weird reason or you're weirdly not patient and you wanna risk that discomfort, but I really wouldn't recommend it unless you're getting it for free. Stick with creatine monohydrate, you can get it pretty cheap. Um, all right, on to number two. So number two, we're going with protein. This is a supplement, however, it's also a nutrient. People need to memorize and know that it's a nutrient, it's not a magic powder. Protein isn't any better than chicken. It's just such a good supplement, especially for natural lifters, because it's very hard to hit the correct protein um, recommendations with the Western diet. And that's why just to have it, being able to take it around, it kind of tastes like a milkshake, especially if you're getting a good one, plug EHP, then uh, that's what I like to do. I make protein ice cream, I make, I have it after workouts. It's just, it's so versatile and for that reason it's so effective. And it also contains a lot of our next number three supplement, which are amino acids. Let's dive into that. The reason these little guys are one of the number one taken supplements among bodybuilders and other fitness athletes are that numerous studies in both humans as well as animal subjects have shown that BCAs before or after um, periods of exercise, even during as well, sorry, have shown to increase muscle protein synthesis. Once again, as we noted there, the building blocks of protein, and it also plays a role in preventing muscle degradation. This is huge because